Well, I had been on a, uh, I had led an expedition across Greenland and then to the South Pole with a group of women. And we only got as far as the South Pole. And so I came back and I was very disappointed and I made a promise to myself that if ever I could organize again mm -hmm. another expedition, I would do it. And over the course of some years, I, I learned about leave because she followed the next year on her solo trip. Yeah. And I thought, that's who I want to go uh -huh. with because she can really uh -huh. ski. <laughs> so years later, I wrote her a note. I had been a uh, cross-country skiing, and I also had uh, crossed the Greenland ice cap. And when I came home for the Greenland ice cap, I, I did that with another woman. Yes. Um, and then I learned that this man was skiing to the South Pole and uh, followed his expedition. And when I came, um, after my Greenland expedition, I came home and s said to my husband, maybe I should ski to the South Pole because I had this dream since I was eight years old and he knew it. Wow. And he said, well, you can do it. But you were also alone in yeah. some of the expeditions yeah. compared to Anne. I, I, had a, I had a great time. <laughs> but you know, I'm an introvert. I love I love poetry. I love you know literature. So I have so much. In, so I had a good, really good trip. I'm sure during those trips, you you are you were not always as happy as you are talking to me right now. No, I think I was really irritated and angry the first week because I came into an area with that the the snow was like frozen ocean, you know, oh. stormy ocean, really big waves. So I was telling myself, okay. From tomorrow, you ha you imagine that you're skiing in a in a modern gallery of art, and then I started to ski and, and focused on the pattern in the snow, pattern in the clouds, mm -hmm. and then re combining that because I also brought poetry. You know, my mind went all over, so I felt the energy come back. Wow! That's so that beautiful. was that was fantastic because I was skiing in in you know it is a wide open space. It was some, uh, it's, it's, um, some uh, lines how, how the sound of the, um, the pine trees, you know, uh, is, is, is swaying. And yeah. uh, so I, because I was skiing in the wind, you know, really yes. cold wind. But then I was sort of imagining when I was thinking about that line, that was, this was this f beautiful summer wind in, in the pine trees. But then when you were working together, what was that relationship like? She came over to my home state in Minnesota in the U.S. and we walked for a week talking. We did not talk about Antarctica really. We talked about our families and we talked about our past expeditions as women mm -hmm. and how that um, made us feel and why we wanted to share it to a broader audience. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that responsibility we felt as women at first and we talked about education and how we were mixing them with our expeditions. And um, we found that not only our past expeditions were somewhat similar, Greenland, things like that. Um, the literature that we, we read was very familiar. Right. Our family systems were familiar. That we had this, uh, Leave calls it sister spirit, um, but we had this foundation of, of a friendship that was so quick. We're both introverts, so we don't have to talk all the time. Um, we both love to read. So life for 97 days on Antarctica was v mostly very smooth. Oh my God. We made decisions days. almost like without conversation sometimes. There was no leader. We did everything together. It's a very unusual thing, I think. Is it, it intentional that there, there, there is no leader? It was intentional. Did you guys talk about this? Yes. And why? I think because we both felt that we had the same experience. We both were, had the same uh, background. And it was a you know, two, two people that want, we had the same vision yeah. of this expedition and then it's easy you know because we are going in that direction yeah. okay if there's something that we have to discuss we'll figure it out day and nights together no fight i can tell you I about the morning imagine. no 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 i can tell you about the mornings okay all right because somebody's i'm somebody's laughing somebody's laughing because okay. i'm up early getting out of the tent getting some stuff for in in my sled 
whistling and singing because it's such a beautiful day. She's a whistler. Yeah, I'm a whistler. <laughs> and when I come back to the tent, because Anne is a little bit, would like to be a little bit longer in the sleeping bag, and she, and she said, leave. You know that material in the tent is very thin. <laughs> I have yeah, to say, yeah. Circumstances. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, I just I tried to you know then pull myself together in the mornings, not being so happy than whistling, <laughs> so loud, <laughs> so loud. <laughs> Eventually, it turned out well. So, what has taught you about yourself, about women, about what these expeditions could do? So, you know, we got response from kids because we actually brought a satellite phone. <clears throat> And uh, at the end of the expedition, we, um, we, we had to uh, fly the last few miles because of the time schedule. And we were really down. Instead of thinking about actually what we have achieved, skied 3,000 kilometers, we reached 6 million kids in 116 countries. Yeah. So we ha had actually reached our goals because the educational part was the most important. And then we were just sitting here about, about the few miles we hadn't actually to. So, and then the, the we were, we were uh, talking to the kids and they were sort of supporting us and said, you have changed your life. Now I know what, you know, what I, uh, different things. And they said, well, uh, are you sure that you want to go? Uh, it will be good to have such a good friend. Are you sure you want to go home? Was what a girl was saying. And one said, um, I really, I, I, I can't understand that you haven't been quarreling. Do you have some good advice? My parents also need the <laughs> advice. So, so there's such, a, such comments. And we were sitting with the cell phone, the satellite phone between, uh, yeah. between, and I got, you know, I was, I was really moved. But then after I, was, I felt my tears, I was just looking over to Anne. Ah, tears there as well. <laughs> and then we just looked at each other. Here we are sitting, you know. Depressed, feeling sorry, for yeah, feeling sorry for yourself for these few miles and listening to these kids. We have reached our goals, you know, let's talk about that rather than these few miles. Yeah, what about for you? I think we're always moved by the people that engage with our expeditions. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, we focus on young people, but that expedition was a, somewhat of a surprise for us because we had women, we were in our 40s and we were chasing a childhood dream right. i say you know we, we had dreamed about antarctica separately for so many of our young years and women around the world were writing us and saying i'm watching you two follow your dream and you're in your 40s that means i can perhaps dust off one of mine and do it because i've been so busy raising a family or taking care of an aging mm -hmm. parent or doing a job mm -hmm. I have dreams I still want to do and it's not too late. Yeah. So that was a whole group of people that we didn't go to inspire. Um, and what I've learned, you know, this is the same with teaching is that when you try and inspire someone, oftentimes you get a huge dose of inspiration yourself mm -hmm. from their stories. Beautifully said. And tell me about yours. 1980s, you were already planning to go to the North and the South Pole. What was it like? Well, it was an amazing time. I was a young 30-year-old woman, uh, a teacher, and I had been dreaming about the top and the bottom of the world since I was a young girl, and I had an opportunity to go to the North Pole in 1986 with seven men and 49 male dogs, <laughs> <laughs> and um, it changed my life. It, uh, it taught me that my outdoor love and my educational love could actually come together. And that was the, also the very first time women were being invited yeah. to be on that kind of expedition. Well, I think I, think, uh, I felt a lot of pressure um, because women were writing me all over the world um, about their excitement in seeing a woman doing something um, that hadn't been done before by a woman but also in an environment that was already so foreign to so many people, the top of the world. You know, most people don't want to go there. Um, so there was a lot of attention, and I felt the weight of the expectation on my shoulders um, because I just wanted to do it. I didn't want to do it for any purpose other than Isn't my own. You're working on it for the half of the population of the world. Yeah. 
so but it, it but you know I later on I realized that that was important work too that that um, that other women um, women such as yourself are blazing trails in other mediums mm -hmm. you know other careers and that helps us all as women yeah. take the next step so that was really a, a very profound experience and then the other thing is that um, I'm living a childhood dream in the in such a harsh environment right. it was the hardest work I'd ever done in my life um, I felt like quitting sometimes but then you know that I'd see a, an extraordinary scene and then you get re-energized or you know, one of the dogs gives you a big lick in the face and it, <laughs> the world is right again. Do you have a favorite among the 47? Of course also? I do. What is that? <laughs> Sam. Is that? Oh, Sam. All right. <laughs> Sam is a great pilot. He was very handsome. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, what about the other men that are on the trip? They were helping you? Or sometimes you, it, there could be some kinds of conflict? Well, we, we're, you know, it's an interesting mix because we were very good friends and we still are, but we would have conflict. I would feel sometimes that they would not listen. They would talk over me or um, they would give me compliments sometimes for things that they wouldn't give a, one of the guys a compliment mm. about. Mm -hmm. And, it and would, that's not a compliment, as you may know. Yes, and it would get, over time, it would get quite irritating and I would try and explain that to them and they didn't always understand. How did you explain? Shout? Or, Some days. <laughs> or sometimes in a very uh, genuine and ladylike way. It's hard, isn't it, in the in the Sometimes wild. I had tantrums. <laughs> <laughs> and I could be difficult. And sometimes I would use humor. I think humor gets you uh, uh, many places. Um, and I, you know, I think just telling a story would oftentimes illuminate the feeling of what I was feeling better mm. than me just trying to put words on it. Mm. Um, you know, I would just simply tell a story of why are you complimenting me for this? And then this big guy comes in after me and he's had a worse day than me and nobody says anything. They, they don't say good things or bad things. So, uh, you know, it's how do you keep their ears open to what you want them to hear? And I'm well, ready. that's <laughs> Anne's experience, but what about live for you. I mean, you travel mainly on your own at the very beginning. Yeah, I had one solo expedition, but I just have to comment because I also been in expedition being the only uh, woman. And my feeling is that um, being a woman, it's easier for the men to talk about their feelings yeah. to a woman. I think we have discussing that before, rather than to, than to the male, to the men. So we were sort of the mother, become the mothers of the, you know. Do you want to be in that room? No, I don't want to be. In, but <laughs> that's, but, but the, 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 I think that feels safer to talk about their feelings to a woman rather to to a, 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 tea, a man mm -hmm. in his in his. Uh, but what about team. for you? I mean, do you want to talk to them? No, I think I just wanted to, you know, to reach the uh, the, <laughs> the, the summit as they did. Mm -hmm. But you know, if they had, you know, was yeah. longing home or had a bad day or some, it was easier to talk to me rather to tell one of the, the, their what, friends. What kind of support would they offer for you? Oh, they were very supportive. Well, I got, for instance, when I was climbing Everest, I got altitude sickness. So they were very, you know, very careful so I shouldn't push myself too hard, mm -hmm. for instance. So they were looking after me. Then I realized that I was getting sick. When you reflect back, do you look at yourself at the time as I am very different. I'm a very different person on this team. Or you consider yourself to fit in as soon as possible. I am just a member of the team. The sex doesn't matter, or does it still matter? The outdoor world is so physically oriented that you have to be big and strong to achieve these things. Mm -hmm. And that's a, that's a myth, really. It's really about working together. And, and some teams recognize that, that if you really want to achieve something and you have this group of people, it's better that you play on all your strengths and weaknesses. And one of the things I learned on the North Pole trip is that I was physically the smallest. And mm -hmm. of course I'm physically, I don't compete with a 200 pound 6'6 man, you know, <laughs> he's just huge. And, um, but m my mental strength I knew was strong. I knew I could do what I was setting out to do. And 
it was really illuminating that, that that had m actually more value. Mm -hmm. You know, a sense of humor, how is your attitude when the weather is horrible? Yeah. How do you interact with your team members, etc.? cetera? And, and how well do you know yourself? Those are much bigger attributes for the group dynamic and success ultimately than sort of the physical strength.